Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Eat Me, Question Everything. Today, we have the carnivore queen, Kelly Hogan. Thank you so much, Kelly, for being with us today. I'm so happy to finally talk with you guys. I see Courtney online. We've interacted some, but Devin, it's really nice to officially meet you here. So thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, I'm sure everyone pretty much much knows you your story but there are people who are not going to so do you just want to give us a quick rundown of how you got to carnivore because you've been doing this for a really long time oh uh, sure uh, so in 2004 that's you know obviously that's been a while <laughs> 18 years ago to me when I hear 2004 it doesn't really sound that old any 2000 anything is like oh that's recent no we're talking 18 years ago Mm -hmm. I went to the doctor I was about 25 years old and I was quite obese at that time I was over 260 pounds and I was getting boiled so I'd always been heavy well I'd always yo-yo dieted I'd had lots of times heavy and then times of starving myself down lots of times heavy just my whole first 25 years of life and the doctor that day, he had he had just been lancing these boils on me, which if you don't know what lancing a boil means, my husband is like, if you say the phrase lancing a boil one more time, <laughs> it totally grosses him out. We were married at this time. So he remembers it was awful. Um, he would have to literally cut them open, drain them, pack it with gauze. And I would have to change the gauze out every day on my body. Like it was bad. So after this doctor, his name is Dr. Benjamin Dunlap. He's just a local, local family doctor. He didn't fuss the first several times I went. And then, and I kept looking up like, why is this happening? Is it hygiene? I keep changing soaps, antibacterial, never suspected food, not once in 2004. Uh, Now I suspect food for everything. (laughs) If my kid sneezes twice, I'm like, what did you eat? (laughs) <laughs> but back in those days I didn't uh, that's just not where my mind went I thought it was the soap um my doctor said well Ms. Hogan we're just gonna keep doing this till one of us dies I was like, what? and I felt shocked by that of course and he said or until you lose a hundred pounds and I don't think most doctors nowadays would just be that blatant. And he really did hurt my feelings. And I did cry. And I'm so glad. Right? Because he could have just kept doing that forever. Just lancing boils. He makes money. Everybody wins. Except for me. And he said, I said, I've really tried to lose 100 pounds. I've tried many times. I don't know how. And he said, you're inflamed. And I don't have to do a blood test to tell you that. You're inflamed and it's the carbohydrates. And this is me. Okay. I don't really know what that means, though. I really didn't. Like, what's a carbohydrate? I've heard of them. I didn't know. Uh, My family was just, they just bought fat free everything, like a lot of parents in the 80s and early 90s. And I didn't know to avoid carbs whatsoever. In fact, I was mostly eating cereal and skim milk all day, every day. Uh, He said, he, he had a little pamphlet. He taught me that day what are carbohydrates potatoes and bread and pasta and cereal it was like oh crap that's everything I eat all day (laughs) and then he's like I don't want you to touch any of that for one year he said I do not care if it's your birthday don't touch it and I literally said what else do you what do you eat he said okay he turns over the paper there are all these different meats eggs omelets cheese is on there he had things like green beans cucumbers leafy greens he said they won't kill you dr anthony chafee might disagree (laughs) but he said you know if you want to eat some of those that's fine and that's where i started off oh he also said diet soda and he said i want to see you back here in one year we'll see how you did and i expected to see him again in a couple of weeks cuz i was just having to come in for these boils but i made it a full year i've never had a single boil since and in that first 300 is almost exactly a year when i went back um i had lost 80 pounds and he was of course beyond thrilled for me he didn't even recognize he's like <laughs> miss hogan <laughs> he said what did you do i was like i literally just ate meat eggs and cheese And I told him, I really don't like leafy greens, but I did like pickles. I kept the pickles (laughs) for a long time. I don't now. So I did that for five years and it worked 
beautifully almost exclusively meat those are my five almost carnivore years and but the cravings never went away I was hardcore I can't even believe I fought cravings for real for five years it was hard and then in 2009 I actually met real carnivores who were like you still drink diet soda <laughs> is that bad it says card zero and they said that's why you want sweets all the time it's the diet soda and sugar-free jello i was still eating sugar-free jello so i cut that out it took me three days before i stopped having cravings and that's been 13 years ago and i still have no cravings no boils the weight i i eat a lot (laughs) a lot uh people are like well of course you lost weight going carnivore you eat fewer calories are you for (laughs) real with that (laughs) i was eating fat-free cereal and skim milk all day and now i can easily especially on i do high fat days and then lower fat days on a high fat day i easily eat 3500 calories um so yeah it it wasn't just the calories for me it turns out (laughs) so yeah that that that's how i got here That's so wild. I feel like you're so ahead of your time. And even like the doctor, like suggesting that way back then is like mind blowing. Yes. And yeah, I feel you on the fat free everything, the sugar free jello with like fat free cool whip. I mean, because I I come from a place of, you know, yo yo dieting as well. And, you know, 20 years ago or whatever, when I started doing that, um, yeah, like South Beach diet stuff. So aware of the cars, but yeah, the low fat and like, Lord knows what ingredients are in that thing too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Kelly, well, that's something, wild. something you re- said resonated with me though, because you thought it was your soap. You never. So my mom has severe yeah. celiac disease, severe celiac disease. And she started oh. noticing that she would get shingles on her face, but they didn't think about the food. Oh. It was the soaps, the, the lotions, anything topical And it wasn't until she did an elimination diet and nailed it down to celiac, but no one ever told her like, oh yeah, your shingles might be caught like the shingles and the the psoriasis or whatever it was might be an internal inflammation. And it's so funny because it's topical and still to this day, that's what people automatically go to with anything skin related is it's topical. And we just know that that's not true. So I'm wondering, was there an official diagnosis of why you were getting these, um, these boils and these skin issues or just, it was your inflammation. He didn't even do a CRP test. I really wish he had because people say, well, how much did it drop? I'm like, he said that day, I, I know you're inflamed. I can look at you. And when I look back at my photos, I mean, like the serious rounded face, mm-hmm. redness, like I just had the look of inflammation. So I don't fault him for not needing a test. It would just be fun data at this point because my CRP levels now stay at around 0.5. I guarantee you they were not 0.5 back then. <laughs> so what was like when you started how has your diet changed from when you started to now because obviously I think even I've only been carnivore for a year and my diet has like changed dramatically from the beginning to now so over the course of all these years like what did you start doing and how are you different now yeah so we're gonna skip the I kind of summed up that first five years Um, It wasn't enough fat, by the way. I didn't know. Again, I was basing five years of life on this one amazing conversation with my doctor. (laughs) Well, and some follow-ups where he basically kept checking my lab work saying, just keep going. You're doing great. Okay. So then in 2009 is when I really say that's when I began carnivore because that's when I found out it was the sweeteners that were the issue. And I found out you really need fat. Um, I was looking very sunken in my eyes and I wasn't feeling very good my skin was dry Uh, I had some symptoms mental fog was of like rabbit starvation too lean uh, because Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't know protein good it needs fat with it Um, at least it doesn't have to be every day of your life but more than I was doing it Um, so in 2009 I added much more fat I, at that point, did what most people would call lion diet, but without salt. I ate only beef for eight, about eight months when I first found the community in 2009. We didn't use salt at all back then, no seasonings whatsoever. We didn't drink seltzer water or coffee. It was straight, just filtered water, 
and beef. And we loved it. That's just what we did. You know, when you're looking around and the whole room is doing it, you're like, this is what we do. And I did that until one of the reasons I went looking for that community was my period had stopped. Again, I wasn't eating much fat and I'd lost weight. And sometimes periods don't like that combination. Mm -hmm. Um, And so they had said, if you want your period back and you want a baby, we really would love to see you eating more fat. And I ramped it up big time. So for that eight months, just fatty beef and water. Then I got pregnant. That's when I brought back bacon, eggs, cheese, salt, seasonings. I was just living it up. I felt like, my gosh, at the variety. And I felt maybe (laughs) after I have this baby, I'll go back to just beef and water. But I I never did. Mm -hmm. Uh, I felt good. I felt I felt good pregnant. Then I had a baby. I was like, you're not taking my bacon now. (laughs) I love it. And I just kept it. Um, I focus. Then I guess the next big section of my carnivore life was just burger patties. And it's because I just kept having babies (laughs) and they were all little and I was busy. I was working full time. I was working also as a moderator, just free work on zeroing in on health Facebook group. And I I literally didn't care about food at all. I just wanted to not be hungry. So I ate six to eight burger patties every single day, or at least I would say 98% of the days for a decade, 10 years. That's pretty much all I ate. And I didn't add cheese hardly ever. I didn't add bacon unless we went out to eat. I just ate burger patties. And it was more about um, life, just being busy. It fit my life. More than it was like, oh, I only feel good on burger patties. That I'm sure I would have felt great on the bacon, eggs, cheese, omelets. All of that was great. Okay, then I I basically did that until a couple of years ago when I started being more active on Instagram. And burger patties don't look that great on Instagram every day. (laughs) So I started like fixing cuter plates of food and sharing that but that was more for aesthetics and also then it was like wow this is delicious my kids are older I can put more thought into it and then came July of last year when I decided to try high fat carnivore because I knew some people who were doing great with it um I went like all in from one day burger patties and steak to okay 80 percent calories from fat let's see what happens and it for a couple of weeks I had a lot of upset stomach, some acid reflux. I didn't feel amazing, but some things were feeling better. Um, I had had some breast tenderness that I couldn't explain. Nothing was wrong. I'd had everything tested. Wouldn't go away. And it did. It went away on high fat. I was like, oh, so now I have diarrhea, but my boobies don't hurt. That's that's something. <laughs> All right. You know, life is a balance. And also, I'd had a little bit of lower back pain on standard carnivore. My kidney numbers all came back perfect. I was having it checked. Everything was fine. But my lower back just had like what felt like a kidney ache. It wasn't muscular. I mean, like doing push-ups, nothing hurt it. It just sometimes would ache. And it went away on high fat. I was like, all right, I'm going to power through this upset stomach issue. And it resolved. And then I just felt, I felt really good. So I've kept that up. And... Now in the last month, I've experimented some with alternating between super high fat and more standard carnivore diet, just switching because I don't know, something to do, right? That's a long answer. (laughs) No, that's good. That's good. So I have a question about the 80-20 because my understanding is why this started is because um, some of you big carnivore people, I guess, were having like higher glucose numbers, like going into the pre-diabetic range. Is that correct? Like this is, I'm hearing through the grapevine. Okay. Why did this movement start? All right. Dr. Lisa Wiedemann hosted a meetup in New Jersey. This is where our whole portion, I don't know who else in the world was doing 80-20. We didn't know about it. Oh, Dr. Boz always talked about, okay. I didn't even know who a Dr. Boz was till July. Frankly, I go to this meetup in July and some of Dr. Lisa's members were talking about Dr. Boz. I'm like, oh, who's that? They said, oh, she's really into checking glucose and ketones, the Dr. Boz ratio. And she says eating high fat gets that ratio down. And that's where some people really get great results. Huh. So I signed up for a course with her right after I got back home because I was curious. Dr. Lisa had seen her A1C numbers start to climb up. She's been carnivore about half a year longer than I have. And her numbers were going up. 
I had not had a high A1C test. I mean, I mean, like mine, I think the highest I ever saw was maybe 5.1. So like good, mine were fine. Also, I mean, I am still, I'm only 44. It's pretty young. It's only been 13 years. We'll give it time, but it was going fine for me. Uh, but some of her group members were older ladies. And some of my group members, a lot of them are older ladies who were doing standard carnivore and they just weren't losing weight and some of them at least felt good and then others are like honestly I'm still really tired I don't have any energy at all and I'm like, how how is how is it possible that you're eating all this meat and you have no energy and you're not losing weight it just didn't make sense it didn't make sense so if they're only eating piles of steak it's like well let's let's try something different you've done that for two years good good uh try something new so that's it's kind of where it started was a, some conversations with group members up there and then taking that course with her at that same time there were two coaches Emily and Amy uh Amy Bellinger Emily oh shoot okay I, I shouldn't have started naming names they also hosted like a free workshop on how they were feeling so much better with high fat I was like all right let's do this <laughs> I'll try Okay. Yeah. Cause that's definitely trending right now. I feel like and getting like a lot of controversy, like some people are very confused how eating high fat can help people lose weight. There's a lot of like pushback and I'm just wondering, like, I wonder why, cause I feel like we all get to carnivore because we've tried so many things and this is the end of the road why wouldn't we want to self-experiment and see if something makes us feel better? So are you getting a lot of pushback on that or what's your experience? Um, yes. Oh, for sure. A little bit less so right now, but for sure in the beginning, um, like why would you tell people to eat lots of fat if they have body fat? And also I had some people say, Kelly, you did an interview with the Emmerichs two years ago talking about eating less fat you know why the sudden change I'm like well first of all two years is really not that sudden <laughs> and also <laughs> because something with me started to feel like I had some reasons to want to change and because people were doing that and for some people it worked beautifully you know there are people who easily drop a hundred pounds just by cutting out carbs the end whatever macros they want to eat all the eggs all the fat all the lean protein they want they just cut out carbs they lose 100 pounds what about when that doesn't happen and then it's like crickets <laughs> okay well now we got to try something different and mm -hmm. if they've already tried lean and i'll tell you a lot of the people who were not doing well had already tried super lean because we all grew up being told fat is the problem. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the first things people were adjusting was, oh, I'm going to cut back on fat because I'm not losing weight. Okay. How did that go? Well, for a lot of them, if they did that very long, they found that they were starving, depressed, and constipated. I heard it from so many women. So they like had to add fat because they couldn't take it anymore and so for the folks it's like okay you tried standard american diet you've tried standard carnivore you tried lean carnivore well there aren't all that many options left let's try high fat and for some folks it has been like I i've had people in the groups who sit and cry they're like this is it i was so close to giving up and i'm like oh my gosh that's amazing and then others are like yeah that wasn't it either okay <laughs> You know, I don't think any of us thought, like, I think we figured out the one macro that's going to be perfect for everyone. But it it is helpful to some people. And that's worth talking about to me. And there are folks that love having 200 grams of protein per day. A lot of those folks are lifting weights and do not have a high fasting insulin score, though. And if you're not a weightlifter, you don't have a lot of lean muscle mass, you have a ton of insulin in your blood, a lot of those folks just don't do well with lean, a lot of lean protein. So, yeah. I, and so, to me, the controversy was always, um, what else would you like them to try at this point? Just keep going with burger patties because it worked for me. I feel like that's that's cruel and a little bit nuts. Um mm -hmm. 
And I still think even for the ones where they say high fat wasn't it, I actually think, and I've seen this, people who go from standard carnivore for a really long time, I don't mean I gave it two weeks, it wasn't working. I mean, some of them legitimately, like at least a year, some of them two years, I know personally, two years where they haven't really lost that much weight in two years, did high fat and said, oh, that's, it's so tasty. I wish I could do it, but I'm not losing weight. So then after a few weeks of that, they go back to standard carnivore. And what do you know? Some of them then do start losing weight. I think that the high fat protocol, even for a really brief amount of time for healing, is actually really important because weight loss tends to come from a healthy body. As Danny Conway says, I say this all the time, weight loss is a byproduct of a healthy body and balanced hormones. And I think the high fat is great for balancing hormones. It may be that not everybody needs to stay there forever, but then you can back off. And I think your body sort of was like, after a while, even the ones who are like eating sticks and sticks of butter after a while, like, holy cow, I can't eat any more butter. I'm like, okay, then back off. That's your body saying I'm good. And then some of those folks do start losing weight. So I don't know. Keep trying, right? Keep trying. Yeah, I think that's whole the whole part is to just self experiment. And yes, you're so right. Your body will tell you when enough is enough. Because I was one of those that was like on camera, like eating six of butter. I have this whole weird video made about me and my butter addiction. Um, but it's like in reality, like I haven't had that in probably like a few weeks. Like once in a while, I'll go in and yeah. eat butter. But it's like sometimes your body just craves it, especially like if I'm craving chicken wings, like, and I'll eat a lot of chicken. Well, the next day I'm probably going to be biting into that butter stick. So I think it definitely balances out too. And, and yeah, yeah the, having that lot of fat, like that's been good for me too. Yeah. yeah me too. I, I still love I think, it very much. Sorry. I think Devin's delayed a little bit on hearing us. Got it. <clears throat> Am I good now? Am I good now? Yeah. Go. Okay. Yeah. I, I texted my husband to unplug some of the internet devices, see if that helps. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, so I, and I, I think something to play off, am I delayed? I feel like I'm delayed. I think something bit, important, I think something important to notate is that for women, because of our cycle, the, our fat and protein needs can change too. Like depending on our cycle, like we crave fat when we need it. And we might crave more protein when we need it too. It's very cyclical. I, I believe. Um, that makes sense to me. It does. I've been told that people who do water fasting, that it's very cyclical, how it fits into their cycle. Um, I do fat fasting, so it may work similarly. I haven't, I have not given that much thought, but I, I'll start to sort of pay attention to when do I crave more fat versus protein? But yeah, to me, it's more like what Courtney was saying. If I do really high fat one day, usually the next day I want more steak. If I have a whole bunch of leaner meat, then the next day I tend to just want a lot of fat. So, yeah. Okay. I have some questions about community because Evan's a year in, I'm like nine months in. I've been on and off keto before this for like seven years. I had never heard of carnivore till like 10 months ago when Saladino was posting on TikTok. So nice. I'm like completely out of the loop. Like, why didn't anybody tell me? How did I not even see that when I'm following low carb, you know, accounts? So I'm curious, like when I think you said like 2009 is when you found like an online community, like, okay, that's mind blowing to me. So I'm curious, like, what things were like back then, how long you've been sharing your journey on social media and what was it like then? Because I feel like right now it's like trending and it's such a hot topic. Um, so what, what was it like in the, in the good old days when we weren't there? Oh, here's what's sort of funny. I, when I first in 2009 found this big booming group of carnivores online, I felt just like what you were saying. Oh my gosh, where have I been? Cool. It turns out carnivore is trending now. That's how it felt because you found it, right? There's the people. It's trending now. Okay, well then a few years later, Dr. Baker puts out his book and so many people found it and they all show up and are like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Carnivore is trending now. Um, <laughs> I've heard that 
so many times through the years. And then I just saw an article the other day, and I think it was the one you were in, Courtney, that says, it turns out carnivore is trending now on TikTok. I'm like, oh my gosh, we've been trending now, like this is the 14th time, but it turns out none of these times are we actually really trending. The majority of people have no idea. Still, I mean, survey every American and you might find what, 3% that even know it's a thing? 1% that have ever tried it? Oh, gosh, no, less than 1% for sure. So I would say it always feels like we're trending to the people who are in the middle of it. In my world of Instagram, everyone's a carnivore, except my husband. <laughs> I don't follow that many non-carnivores. But when I go out like to real people and I say something like, oh, I only eat meat. It's called the carnivore diet. I'm like, the heck? <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, all right. So what was it like back then? It was journals. We all would show up and share photos and write daily journal entries all day, every day. We were all really tight. Um, I've asked Charles Washington. He was the head of that group at that point. He's not public now. As of like six months ago, he decided to go kind of like, OK, I'm tired of being a carnivore guru. I just want to eat my meat and be quiet about it. He may change his mind. I don't know. Um, but he headed up that group and he thinks there were maybe two or 300 of us. I only interacted with probably pretty tightly, maybe 50 people who were very, very active that I knew. And we just would comment on each other's journals. And then after maybe a year or two, I don't know how long we were there. It moved to Facebook and all of that old website was gone because you had to pay for it. It was a paid subscription. And I guess everybody got tired of paying. So we moved to Facebook and it was honestly, it it took off, it grew and it was never quite the same. Cause he, you know, instead of 50 to 200 people that were journaling, it was soon 30,000 people, 50,000 people that were just posting little shreds of life. You didn't really know anybody, um, which is a good thing for the movement as far as like, yay, we grew. The Facebook groups grew and grew and but for community if I felt like some of that was lost and then I came over to Instagram in 2020 and was like my gosh there are carnivores on Instagram I had no idea I had never looked for carnivores on Instagram I was just Facebook for all those years and then I found out okay it's trending <laughs> it's, <laughs> look at that carnivore is trending I, and that's like I said that was around January of 2020 and I I was actually just talking to someone yesterday about this I heard that's when Bella joined so like those of you that have like the large following is that kind of like when you guys all started yes. in that year then give or take I'm not sure I know Sean Baker at that point already had I think he started on Instagram pretty quickly when he had the book out so he was there long before I'm sure Dr. Barry was there but as far as who would have started around that time i think me probably dr lisa um bella i don't know who else but i feel like we were all kind of pretty small accounts at that time right and what were the comments like were you getting a lot of hate like what were you no. getting a lot of views then was the growth quick oh 20 by 2020 life was good life as a carnivore has been good online since probably more like 2017 prior to that every interview I ever did hate 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 ever <laughs> it was not nice articles videos it would just get I didn't have a YouTube channel but I went on lots of other channels and the comments were usually not nice by the time I on Instagram in 2020 so nice there were some vegan accounts that were not cool but the vegans will always be with us <laughs> and at least the majority of people there were just okay with it. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I, I definitely feel like it's more of a, a like-minded community on Instagram. Uh, I mean, there are like the hates, but that's kind of where I feel like you're like nurturing your community. Whereas like TikTok and stuff where it's oh, constantly being pushed out to new people. And that's so funny that you say like, yeah, I think we feel like because we're in it that like this is it and it's and it's trending and if you felt like that many times along the year it's just 
Yeah, that's funny. I do think though, like maybe, maybe it has little spurts here and there because I, I do see it trending on TikTok, at least to me, like, or maybe it's the new car syndrome. Like now I just see it everywhere, but I feel like there's just a lot of like press about it lately. Yes. Um, so maybe it's having a little growth spurt right now, but yeah, I think it's awesome that more people are, are finding out about it, but yeah, there, most people don't know. And we, and we think that they do because that's what we're doing. But yeah, yes. a lot of people are, have no clue what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> no, when the Petersons, when uh, Dr. Jordan and Michaela, when they came out, we were like, heck yeah, that was another moment of we're trending. <laughs> it's so big. Everyone knows now. And it every single bit of that is amazing because every single individual that hears that it's a thing makes it easier for our kids in the future to ever say they are meat based if they choose to do that. It makes it easier for us. You know, when a vegan goes out to eat, no one questions. What do you mean? What is vegan? What is what is this vegan thing? People just know. And I would love for people to just have that same amount of awareness. When somebody gets a boil, I would love for their first thought to be, oh, I wonder if it's what I ate and not I wonder if I'm dirty. You know, <laughs> like I wish people I want people to know. So, yeah, I love the fact that TikTok is taking off. I, I had to leave TikTok for right now. It was it's intense over there. I mean, I could have just turned off comments and made videos and maybe I will someday. I did it for several months. It was going pretty well. And then I thought, I think my soul is turning black. It, it's kind of dark over there. Yeah. It's atrocious because it's a lot of like younger people. And I feel like maybe they don't, they aren't quite there to have the open mind. Like they're, they've just been easily believing what they've been told and yeah, it would be nice to have this uh, become a little bit more mainstream, I guess. Like now I remember like when I jumped in keto seven years ago, it was new, at least to me, it felt like it was new. Um, and a lot of people weren't really sure like what I was talking about. Um, and now I feel like that's accepted. Like people yep. may have their opinions about it, but everybody knows what keto is. And now maybe in an, I don't know, maybe we'll get there soon with carnivore. Wouldn't that be cool? I know I'll sometimes say, yeah, I do like a uh, a ketogenic diet. If I'm like at a grocery store and somebody asks about my shirt or something, it's easier to just say. And it's also true, you know, uh, and it's cool that a lot of people that you see some understanding. Oh, cool. Like they know at least ballpark what that's about. Yeah. Well, I actually met a new friend recently and we were talking about like Thanksgiving and we were talking about the food and she's like, well, what kind of diet do you eat? And are you like low carb? I'm like, well, you're going to think I'm kind of crazy. She's like, what are you carnivore? I'm like, oh, I'm like, how did you even like know about this? She's like, well, I listened to Joe Rogan. <laughs> so Joe Rogan's helped a little bit of people become more aware. That was another one of those peaks of we're trending. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Rogan, that was a pretty big deal for us. <laughs> yeah, no, that's for really great. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like anything that comes out is a huge win for the carnivore community. And like, I, I feel a sense of um, community over competition. Like, even if someone else is winning that I think everyone appreciates that, that like, we're all winning. Like, yay, you're like, Kelly, I know you just hit 100k on YouTube and on Instagram. And that's awesome, not only for you, but like, just for the community in general, we want more people to know about this so they can stop feeling like shit. Yes. That sums it up right there. Yeah. If we want people to feel better and we really believe in what we're saying, and I really passionately do, then I want every single carnivore content creator to go viral. All of them. Because, and even the ones I don't completely agree with, and people are like, oh, how do you feel about Dr. Paul Saladino with all of his fruit? And I'm like, I couldn't eat that way. It would not work for me. I think I would be right back into sugar 100% because I was an addict. But also, what if he did go completely viral? Would it be better or worse than the standard American diet? Would health improve? Absolutely. He's closer to the mark than most anybody I know, other than carnivores, real yeah. carnivores. <laughs> no, right? yeah. And he, I know he just, I, I don't know what he's doing on TikTok right now, but I just saw he's like a million on Instagram. And it's awesome. great. He's he's bringing awareness. And mind you, 
I don't agree with what he's doing, but I started out that way that he was my introduction to carnivore. I never thought I would go strict carnivore probably because my sugar addiction, you know, my sugar addict brain was like, Ooh, I still get to have like maple syrup and, and fruit. So yeah, I, I may not agree with the 400 grams of carbs and sugars he's eating, but I'm super grateful for him sharing because that's how I found, how I found this. And a lot of people are making really great changes by seeing what he's doing. And I think they're incorporating more meat, realizing that fat isn't the enemy, realizing how great raw dairy can be. And yeah, I mean, the fruit thing is maybe another <laughs> little rabbit hole to go down, but. Yeah, when people do start to at least, let's start with just the basic of, oh, meat is good? Meat is good. Can we just start there? Meat is good. If that were the only takeaway that anybody ever got from him or any other of the carnivores, that's pretty big. And that's why for me, I just try to keep remembering team meat, team meat, because it's not about team Kelly Hogan or team high fat or team, you know, anti fruit. We're all team meat. And really at the heart of it, we're team human. I just want people to feel good. I just don't see many vegans doing it. <laughs> I really believe that eating animal products is good for us. And therefore, anybody who preaches that, whether they're on the same exact page or not, if the pro super high protein people, I still love and support them because by George, they're eating meat. So I'm for it. Let's do it. And then if people, you know, once they get off of the processed junk and they are believing, oh my gosh, my body does feel better with meat, then they can adjust and figure out their macros. But it's a good starting point. I agree. Devin, do you have anything? I feel like I've been thinking over this. Sorry. You're muted. My internet has been going in and out. So I've been trying not to um, say much for the sake of not ruining the interview. <laughs> no. And I could tell because you would laugh like 30 seconds later than we did. So I yeah, didn't want to pressure you here. either and, and wait for you to spawn okay well do you have anything before we um tell everyone where to find her and the questions and stuff um no I think I'm good I enjoyed listening when I was not going bleep bloop bleep bloop so <laughs> oh okay. hey you had put on there that you were going to ask me about butter and I know we talked about butter hmm. but I don't know if you do editing or it can be put back or no no just say what you need to say it's okay. very not professional here all right cool um I was listening to Amber O'Hearn yesterday on a podcast. She was on a channel that's run by a woman named Claire, maybe beyond the scale. I'm not sure. Um, But the, the interview, the woman who was asking the questions, Claire said, I have noticed that when I eat high fat, I just do better and get into a better state of ketosis when I am eating beef fat and tallow instead of just butter. And this woman had been eating a lot of butter no kidding some days you're gonna think i'm lying but this is what she says and i believe her 10 plus sticks of butter per day and her ketones were high-ish but she said then i switched to beef fat this woman needs to gain weight by the way p.s she couldn't gain weight with even 10 pounds or 10 sticks of butter per day she didn't gain weight um she switched to beef fat and suddenly she just felt better. Her ketone levels were higher and it was like magic for her. So she said, Amber, why is this? And I did not realize, it's the first time I've heard it say it, I wrote it down. Butter is about 60% saturated fat and beef fat is about 40% saturated fat. And Amber O'Hearn, who is one of the greatest carnivore researchers that there are, in my opinion, said... The less saturated the fat, the more of a ketogenic response our body has. Hmm. What? I had not heard that before. So she says for a lot of people, even though butter is a great choice, if it's not working well for them, switch to beef fat that the lower amount of saturation and the fact that it's not dairy, which does have in some people, even a mild, but some of an insulin response. She says beef fat has far less than any dairy will ever have. So anyway, I'm just throwing it out there. If somebody is eating tons and tons of butter and says, oh, high fat's not for me, it's possible that just a different fat source could help. Yeah, I've I've heard that too. And I'm like, oh, but, and I see you eating your tallow things and I'm not quite there yet. It took me a while to eat butter, but yeah, yeah. I definitely would say 
that getting it from animal fat would probably be a better option for most. And then I also hear things uh, with maybe like histamine issues with butter yeah. too. And some people like get that racing heart. So yeah. I don't know if that's from, because it's fat in general, or just because it's butter. Like, I wonder if the tallow mm -hmm. would do that too. Yeah, I wonder too, for some of those folks, I have had enough people, of course, to try switching that a lot of folks do say, oh, that is better. It is better. Um, to, once they go to animal fat. Also, so one thing that is great about butter, if people do feel good having it, is it's so full of butyrate, which is really great for gut healing. So if somebody, there are reasons for either one and maybe to have both. Um, but I just... I had never heard that before about the saturated fat. And I was fascinated. In fact, I called Amber up right afterwards. It's like, okay, let's talk about this interview. What a <laughs> gift is that, right? I can just be like, hey, what's up, Amber? Yeah, I love Amber it. on speed dial. That's awesome. I haven't heard that too. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Very yeah. cool. Okay, so um, before we have like three fun questions to ask you. Before we do that, let's have you tell everybody where they can find you if they're not following you. And talk about your coaching. I just want to say I've been in your coaching since I think like November and they're amazing. I learned something new all the time. So for whoever's listening, hundred percent join Kelly's group and get in early. She books out like months, months ahead. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you for saying that. I thank you. I love having you there. You're lovely. And that's quite an honor that you come to the group meetings. I'm always very touched by that. Uh, I'm at my zero carb life, my zero carb life on YouTube and on Instagram. It's Kelly underscore Hogan 91 and coaching groups are linked. I think from a link tree on actually either YouTube or Instagram. Awesome. Okay. Devin, do you want to ask the questions? Or are you having issues with your. I can try and get them out, but if not, do you want to take them over? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we always ask three fun questions. The first is, what is your favorite curse word? Uh, <laughs> I do not curse. Uh, <laughs> I I don't know. I'll tell you what I say. Okay. So my favorite, like, uh, kind of word. I'll usually say, oh, shite. And I don't say it in front of the kids. So it's <laughs> almost like by adding an E. It's not that bad. Okay. I know I'm, I'm like little miss goody two shoes, but I will, I won't say shite in front of the children, but I do say it frequently when I'm by myself. Shite. It's just my word. Yeah. Does that count? Yes. I love it. Okay. <laughs> I need to manifest vibes like that because I have the worst mouth. Um, number two, before you were carnivore, what was your favorite non-carnivore food to eat? Peanut butter. <laughs> I feel that in my soul. I, ice feel cream. Like, I love ice cream too. Yeah, peanut yeah. butter. Will you ever have a bite again? I, I'm torn on this. Um, for a lot of years, I said that either A, when my husband passes away and I no longer care if I'm just going to gain a million pounds, <laughs> then maybe I'll eat peanut butter. <laughs> but now I actually, I'm rethinking that. I'm feeling pretty great and I don't even miss it anymore. Oh, and then... I also used to say, um, maybe for like my 90th birthday, I'll have a bite of peanut butter. But I also, I don't, that was years ago when I would say that. And I think it helped me to think someday, someday I will have this peanut butter. And then it turns out that if you think that long enough, you're eventually like, I don't even think I care. But it took years for me to get there. I really, I literally do not care about peanut butter at all anymore. Yeah. And that's a good point too, with the mindset, especially in the beginning to think like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to have my favorite foods again. Yeah. Like that can be like a little much. So if you maybe tell yourself, oh, like in the future, you know, I can have them again I'll, or I'll have a bite once I get this under control or whatever. And then just to give yourself that mental allowance, and then you'll probably won't care once you get there. <laughs> I've heard some even influencers or people say, I just tell myself I'll have it tomorrow. And I honestly, it, while that strategy does work for people, that's great. Do it if it works. I feel like it's too soon. My brain's going to remember that when tomorrow <laughs> comes, be like, hey, sis, you said yesterday we we're having peanut butter today. So, and I've heard that if you even give yourself 24 hours that your brain is no longer like, it's like, oh, I'm good. But I don't know. I think I might've taken myself up on it. But <laughs> by saying I wait till I'm 90, then I feel like I'm safe now. But if I still want to on my 90th birthday, maybe I will. 
Yeah, I'm right there with you. That's great. Okay, last question. What are you watching and or reading? Uh, I watch almost nothing except my phone, which my husband reminds me is still a screen because he, he knows I can get a little pious about I don't watch any screens. He's like, except the one that's always in front of you. So I don't watch a lot of TV at all. I think we've watched one show since we moved here over a year ago. And it was called, I don't know. It was not a long series or anything. I'm reading something called The Joy Plan. And it has to do with gratitude and looking for the things in life that really bring us internal joy. I have maybe 50 pages in. Still not sure if I'm going to like super highly recommend it, but it's been pretty good 50 pages. <laughs> well, that's good because mindset, I feel like, is all linked to to all of this. It's not just yes. about the food. It's about like your mental health as well. Uh, oh yeah. The folks who start off and they can't get out of the mindset of, oh, so this is how I have to eat. And it just seems so unfair. And it's going to be a long road, babe. <laughs> that mindset, it's, you're going to feel like a dieter forever. And mm, I try to get folks to look at oh my gosh, look at all these amazing, delicious foods I get to eat and feel good, like abundance. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a huge part of it. And that's what I love about your coaching groups too, because it's not just like, okay, here's how to be a carnivore and here's what to eat, because how much could you really talk about that? But it's like the whole mind, body, soul connected little tips and tricks yeah. because the majority of us are, you know, former sugar addicts and right. got to get that mentality right. So Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Well, Kelly, thank you so, so much for talking with us. So amazing. And I'm excited for everybody to hear this and learn all the things. Thank you for having me. Y'all are a joy. Devin, I empathized with you earlier over internet issues, but for real, my heart goes out to you. Thoughts <laughs> and prayers. I really hope your internet gets better. <laughs> it's, it's a thing. Yeah. Right. All right. We'll see you next time, guys. Thank you. Bye.